Casual Magic has been brought to you by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can get cool stuff. Use the code CASUAL for 5% off your order. We're also sponsored by Quiver Time, maker of the Quiver and Bolt deck cases and other fine card holding accessories. Use the code CASUAL on their site for 10% off your purchase. And by Architect, a deck hosting website that doesn't sell anything, but they like me and I like them, so kindly use them for all your deck list needs. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Casual Magic, the show where we talk about the fun side of Magic the Gathering. My name is Stephen Button. Casual Magic is brought to you by Cool Stuff, Inc., Architect, and our brand new sponsor, Quiver. I'm super excited for all of these. It's really, really cool. I love having sponsors, and they help me bring this show to you. And today, we're actually going to be talking about one of the funnest things I've ever done in Magic the Gathering. I brought on my dear friend, senior designer over at Wizards of the Coast, Gavin Verhey, because he did something at Magic Con Philadelphia, which will never be repeated, an event that I got to play in twice, and it still remains, and will probably remain for quite some time, one of the coolest things I've ever done in Magic. Uh, hi, Gavin. How are you? Hello. So good to be back, Shivam, as a special recurring guest star, Gavin. Always glad to be here. You're one of my favorite people to have on here. People love talk. People love it when we talk, and you always have cool things to say. So I'm, I'm very happy to have you back. Yeah, I'm always impressed. Even walking around um, MagicCon Philadelphia, there are people who are like, "Oh, I love your episodes with Shiva." And I'm like, "Oh, well, that's perfect." So when, when you know, a, literally a day <laughs> later, you're like, "Do you want to come on the show?" I'm like, "Of course, I want to come on the show. Like, I love coming on the show." <laughs> You know what was the coolest thing for me? Just there were so many people there wearing my uh, Casual Magic t-shirt from Coalesce, which you can still get from them. Um, and it was wild because like at the last time I was at like Richmond or whatever, it was like mostly my friends who bought my t-shirt and were like, yeah, you know, we're we're helping our buddy out. This time there were people I'd never met before, never seen before. And I was like, this is the coolest thing in the world. I what a great way to and- roll in that natural sponsorship there. You know, that's really good. You know what? They're not even my sponsor anymore. But me but we Cedric still love the shirt. A, still love the shirt. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cedric still sells them, and I'm super excited about it, and it's great. I love Coalesce. They're wonderful. They're so um, good. It was wild, though, because like I met your boss, Aaron Forsyth, at, uh, the, at the GP, not GP, at the convention, and he was like, I've seen your shirt all over the place, and like half a dozen playmats that I've signed have your signature on them. And I'm like, well... I guess we know who's better now, Forsyth. <laughs> <laughs> she even gets around. Shirt what anywhere. I'm <laughs> it's true. So, aside from the myriad other amazing things about this con, which I'm having an episode with Tappy and uh, Kess on, so we can talk in depth about this show. One of the coolest things ever was I was looking through the schedule and I saw Gavin's unknown event, and I'm like, "What the hell is that? <laughs> what is Gavin doing?" That that, and I'm like, "If it's Gavin, I need to know because." I want to be a part of this because anything you're doing that's that sparse in data has to be amazing. And uh, I was really stunned. And so I like signed up and I went there on Friday. We sit down and there were 200 something of us, right? On Friday, I think. And, yeah, it was uh, about, sit- about 200. Yeah. Yeah. We sit down and you're like, all the people on this side of the table, you're Mirin. All the people on that side of the table, you're Phyrexians. And I'm like, all right, team Mirin, let's go. I can deal with this. And then you handed out booster packs first off there was three booster packs of uh phyrexia draft boosters two booster uh two mystery boosters and then one set booster of phyrexia and i was like okay well that's actually that's cool let's go with this i can build a seal deck and then you were like wait but there's more do you want to give the little spiel that you gave about like emulating uh what it's like to work in watsi yeah totally so um you know, I it was a factionalized event. You're going to get either Team Mirren or Team Phyrexian. And as you played matches, you would win points for your team. We actually had a scoreboard that was up where it there was, was like update cool. as people finished matches. So you could see how your team was doing. Um, and that was really cool. And of course, Mystery Booster 1 sealed was very cool. But um, the uh, it wasn't quite spicy enough. There's something I wanted to add in that was really special. And so the number one question I get asked all the time is, what is working at Wizards like? Like, what is it like to go work on Magic cards? And I was like, can I bring that experience to people. So what, what happened is I designed a magic set uh, and it being 60 cards big. I designed a 60 card magic set. Imagine the, they're kind of like mystery booster play test cards, uh, like a mini expansion of those. If they were all set on the war for new Phyrexia, right? And there's, there's, you can pull them up right there. Right. And we print them out at the office. 
I literally, me and my team literally stickered them on the cards, just like how we do at the <laughs> office. And then we painstakingly made packs of 10 cards a piece and um, prepared them all for the event. It's actually a little behind the scenes. I printed them all at, at the office earlier in the week. Um, in fact, the time is literally on every one of those cards. There's a timestamp at the bottom. And then I cut them all out, brought them to oh, Philly. Yeah, and then, really is. <laughs> yeah. And then all day Thursday, like from 9.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., was just stickering magic cards and collating booster packs. So we had like, I don't know, <laughs> 9,000 of these cards to prepare in case of the events capped out. So it was pretty wild, um, but it all worked out. We gave them to everybody and people lost their minds. I mean, you were, you were there playing, yes. Stephen, like to talk about it. Yes. Okay, so we got there, we sit down and you're like, they're handing out the packs and they handed out the, first off, the judges handed out the standard booster packs. And I was like, all right, rad. And everybody at the table was like, cool, we love Mystery Booster, let's do this. And then... And then you come out with a, but wait, and you came and you gave this, I want to emulate working at Watsy. And we're like, wait, what does that mean? And the judges came by with these little, like, basically sleeves of 10 cards each, and they threw them down in front of us. And we're like, holy crap, what is going on? And you crack this thing open. And first off, these cards that I've got in front of me, which are part of this playtest, they're just normal, generic magic cards from, like, battle bond or whatever they're rares they're commons or uncommons they're all cards you've heard of before that were apparently just sitting around the watsi office and they literally have a sticker on top of them that unlike the ones in mystery booster where like you know the playtest cards in mystery booster had were printed like that these are literal physical paper stickers and when you put them down in a stack you could see that they were slightly thicker or whatever and everybody was just like oh what and my entire table we all crack our packs and we're everybody is just looking through these, and you would just hear someone go like, "I got a mox? What the heck is going on?" Or you know, uh, "Oh my god, they put out a real the original mind uh, original uh, skull clamp," and people would start laughing and read the cards, or they would be looking at the cards like, "Judge, what the hell does this do? How do I generate two swords? What is going on?" It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I've done a lot of weirdo magic events. I've been through a lot of this stuff. And getting the chance for the first time ever to look at cards that literally did not exist and will never exist and are just things that you're like, what? Like, let me just set the stage. So for me, I opened my four packs of um, Phyrexia first because I wanted to just set up my thing. And I realized I had two cloths, which is okay. Well, I guess if we're playing red here, I'm on team Phyrexia and like white is the best color. So I just grabbed red, white and went to town with that. And I was looking through and I got a card that uh, might be my favorite magic card of all time now. Wow. Uh, of all time. It might, be, it might even be right there next to Soul Ring. Um, so one of the things is I've always loved the swords of blank and blank. The swords are probably my favorite. They're evocative. They're beautiful. They do incredibly huge effects and they're like, cool. They're cool. The swords are cool. Everybody loves swords. And I've always loved playing with equipment and swords. And so when I cracked open my pack, I got a card here, which is called sort of blank and blank, sort of blank and blank. Right. Yeah. It's and so, it's sort of a sword. It, you know? Sort of. Yeah, it's, and it's like a three colorless card. And I looked at this, and it's like when Sword of Blank and Blank enters a battlefield, choose two tournament legal cards in the Sword of Blank and Blank cycle at random. I love that they're called Sword of Blank and Blank because that's what I just call them, you know, colloquially. Right. And it's like the equipment has the first piece of combat damage trigger on the first chosen one, and the second piece of combat damage trigger on the second chosen one. It doesn't grant plus two, plus two, or protection. Yes, heart still returns a creature. Equip two. So it's like, okay, it doesn't give you the bonus of the strength, it doesn't give you the protection. But the other text on these swords is still Bananagrams. And I was just like, this this is now my favorite piece of equipment of all time. <laughs> like, this is exactly what I want to do. I just want to randomly generate swords. I'm sad that we don't get Dungeons and Dragons in the list because it would have made dice rolling easier. But Because um, then I would have had a full 10. I could have rolled a D10 for either. And I was like, I need to play this. I'm going to put it in the card. Whatever my set is, we're playing this card. It's going to be amazing. And when I got to my game, I played it. And I was like, I yelled out at the top of my lungs, Gavin, I need you. And you came running over and I was like, pick a pair of swords for me. Cause I don't want to figure out how to randomize this. And you were like, sort of a uh, fire. No, you were like sort of light and shadow and sort of fire. Nice. And, and I'm like, all right, sort of light. And nice. Let's go. <laughs> it was awesome. Like later on, I made a bunch of different randomized ways to be able to generate this, but man, 
it is so much fun when you stick this sword out there and you don't know what's coming it's the coolest thing in the world and it, some of the combinations range from like amazing to like very bad and it was very funny oh yeah. to see you know what people got i had, I had one sword was sort of forging piece which my opponent was like yeah you know the lesser known Tol- tolstoy novel <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> And Forge and Peace, by the way, sucks. Not a great combination. And then my last game, I rolled Sword of Fire and Ice. And I was like, ah, true, t- tested, and it works every time. It was gross. But one of the people I was playing against pulled an actual sword, the from the one from one. And I was like, oh, well, they they're going to they're gonna beat me because they're protection from red. Whoops. But dude. God, all these cards, every time somebody would play one, the everybody in the surrounding areas would stop and we would look and we would try to figure out what's going on. And like one of the other my one of my other favorite cards and one that did me incredible damage was Who's that Predator? Which Everyone's you could favorite not game play. show. You couldn't play it without doing it just exactly like that. You would hear that chant going through the hall all the time. And it was amazing because Who's That Praetor is basically a six mana spell. You cast it and then you roll it effectively a D6 and you get one of the five modern Praetors or Eben Praetor from friggin' from, from Forgotten Realm and from Fallen Empires. And it was funny as heck because like it turns out Eben Praetor is still a 5-5 five five, and it still hits really hard. So uh, I was able to uh, smash face. I won with an Eben Praetor and then I had Vorin Klex later. And turns out Clex, very good. <laughs> one of my favorite moments I saw is someone had Elishorn Mother of Machines in play, like the the new one. And mm-hmm. but it, it got like locked down by the pacifism variant in in the set. Yeah. So they played Who's That Praetor? They rolled Ebon Praetor and they ended up sacrificing their Elishorn to the <laughs> Ebon Praetor. Which is like who who's the real Praetor now, you know? <laughs> yes yeah, that is it's like emulating the best part of commander two cards that were never meant to ever see each other suddenly working together right 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 so can you so how did this come about how did you come up with such a really cool idea i was talking to scott larrabee who is uh one of the people running these shows obviously on the rc and i was chatting with him at the uh at the pro tour because i went upstairs to go say hi and he was like yeah Apparently, like he was like, Rosewater did Infinity set, like the mega draft at uh, Vegas, and you guys want to do something else like that at every Magic Con. And he says, All right, Gavin, what do you got? And is that effectively the genesis of where this came from? Yeah, so I'll tell you exactly what happened. It's a day in December, Scott, or maybe it's November, but regardless, it's late, late in last year. Scott Larry was walking over to my desk and he's like, Here's the deal pastimes events and pastimes runs of the events that are Magic Cons. Every event next year, all the Magic Cons next year, they want to have one event that is different each time and that you design and run. Um, and they've specifically asked for you, Gavin, to be the person who does all this, right? Because How um, cool is that? And they're like, are you up for it? And I was like, yeah, what? Can you tell me about the event or you know what you want to do? And they're just like, uh, whatever you want to do. It's up to, it's up to you. <laughs> you. You know, you have, you have carte blanche within reason to figure it out. And so- Within you know, reason? I, I, yeah, I mean, there's probably some things I couldn't get away with, but I, I talked, uh, so then I set up some calls with pastimes, kind of get an idea of what they were going for. And their big things to me were they were like, they wanted something that would be a spectacle that would like get people more than just like sitting down playing as an opponent, make you feel like you're part of something a little bit larger, right? So that's a bit of theatrics and then something really special. You can only get out at the convention. That was all basically all the instruction I was given. And then, um, I, I was like, okay, I'll think about it a little bit. And play test cards I came up with pretty quickly. Um, I, I thought it was just be a fun idea. People love the mystery booster play test cards. I think back to the old, like Mark Rosewater invitationals where he would do that. And mm. I was like, well, I'll, this here's an idea I have, but man, getting this approved is going to be, I doubt this is going to get approved. And then to my surprise, I emailed like Blake and Aaron, um, and with like my pitch, and I was like, kind of looking like, all right, we'll see what happens. And they're just like, that sounds awesome. Like go for it. Right. And <laughs> it's one of those ideas that just sounded so cool. They were like, yeah, go for it. You should just go ahead and do it. Right. Um, and then, okay, so I had the playtest card component, but I was like, I, I need something else. I want like the theatrical p- component. And believe it or not, I was hiking around uh, Guatemala with my <laughs> with my friends, uh, Talia Vess and David. And um, I was like, I need to figure out some kind of cool theatrical thing to do here for this event I'm going to run in Vegas or in a, um, 
in Minneapolis Philly. or sorry, the other one, Philadelphia. Because Venom's gonna run Philadelphia. <laughs> and I didn't, didn't give them any other details, which is well, what, what do you think would be fun for this? And they're like, you know, it'd be fun to have like some kind of thing you accrue points for. And the moment they said points, the whole thing flashed in front of my eyes like a vision. I was like, okay, I know what we're gonna do. Mirans, Phyrexians, points, battling, pick a team. And it, it all came together in, in a flash in that one moment. And oh, I was like, I, cra- I cracked the code. So I came home from that trip. I guess that I was, they asked me to do it in November because that trip was in the end of, end of November. So I came back from that trip. And in December, I wrote, early December, I wrote a message to Pastimes. Here's my pitch. And um, they were like, that sounds great. Everyone got on board. And, and it was just lock and load at that point. Now, I was the only designer attached to this project. So it was just me coming up with everything. I designed all the cards. Um, I, you know, figured out all the details of the event or whatever, um, along with pastimes, of course, help facilitate it, but it was really fun to work on. And the cool thing is after this event, now people internally are like, Hey, that sounds awesome. Uh, what's the Minneapolis one going to be? Can I, I help out with whatever that one's going to be? And I'm like, great. Now I got people interested to help out. Um, and the truth of the matter is, I don't know what the Minneapolis one is going to be. I was like, I'll see how this one goes and then figure out Minneapolis. So I guess I got whatever, three months to, to figure out what we're doing there. Okay, so before we delve further, though, I do want to know, you were there at both of them. What do you think? How did it go? I think it went awesome. I, I, it exceeded my expectations. Like normally, you know, normally I'm like, well, yeah, it did well, but there were these errors or whatever. But I mean, this this event did better than I could have ever imagined. People loved it. It was the talk at the convention. People were tweeting about it afterwards. People in the halls were like talking about it. As you said, at people's tables, they were like sharing cards with each other. Like, did you see what this did? Right. Mm-hmm. Um on uh, on the Saturday event, which benefited uh, Black Girls Code, we had like 350 people, which was amazing. Um, Aaron and Forsyth and Mark Rosewater, Dave Humphreys came down, and they were all having a, a blast. Rosewater. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah, I, yeah at the uh, during the draft on Saturday, or the, the during the sealed portion, Rosewater was sitting next to me on this side, and Amazonian was sitting next to me on that side, and I was like. All right, I'm at the fun people table. Let's go. <laughs> well, well, and there's just there's so many stories that came out of it. Like, um, you know, and the thing about these cards is, even if some of them are stupid or busted or whatever, I was like, well, you're only gonna play with them for three rounds ever. And I knew that I could do some kind of off the wall stuff because worst yeah. case, you play three rounds. Maybe if you're like Shivam, you play six rounds. You play in both events, but um, I couldn't even talk on Saturday, and I was still like, I'm gonna do this now. Audience, I need you to know something. I went 3-0 and on Friday, and I was like, this is the best event I've ever played. I'm stoked. And everybody's like, of course you did. You won. I went 0-3 on Sun- on Saturday, and I still had one of the best times I've ever had. I got obliterated. My deck was fantastic, and I ran into Ojitai from a Mystery Booster and got crushed. I ran into like a perfect on-curve like, uh, green deck and got crushed. I ran. I mean, I-, I was just obliterated, like vaporized, like one of the worst seals I've ever had type of thing. Still one of the greatest events I've ever done. Absolute joy. People were losing. People were winning. People didn't care, except they were like, no, I didn't get to give the points to my team. Because <laughs> everybody was having a good time. But we cared. We were invested. Um, it was on the from the ground floor. It was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It was the most people having fun. Everybody was having a blast. Everybody was doing redonkulous nonsense, putting combinations of crap together that really never should have happened. I saw Wheeler playing. I saw a bunch of the LRR folk playing. I saw like people were just like, yo, can I, can I get into that? Like we saw rebel playing. We saw all of our dear friends. It was so much fun, Gavin. Like I went and I told literally everybody I could who had a Watsy badge. I'm like, so Gavin, created an event which is the best thing i've ever done you should tell him and a form of a promotion wizard but it was amazing it was phenomenal thank you so much oh it was it was so cool and the cards are delightful and people are already asking me to make some of them real so i mean you know it's a bit of a long shot but who knows maybe one or two of them if people love them enough will uh if there's ever another mystery design. booster i would totally want to see who's that prater and sort of board and board and sort oh, of blank yeah. and blank in the thing um some of them were like really really funny though i loved like the um there's a lot of in jokes like i loved leech medic which basically puts a copy of leeches into your hand right or um crux of mirrodin like either destroy all the things that were in old mirrodin or destroy all the things that were in new mirrodin i was like that's funny um but i want to tell people about one cool thing that happened so the first game i was playing i was playing against a person who was new to magic who had played started playing in right before the uh, pandemic and then stopped during lockdown. And I was like, why would you sign up for an unknown event? You have no idea. And they're like, well, I thought it was on something. And I was like, oh, okay, well, whatever we're here. I mean, they were so new that they didn't realize that after I cut your deck, you're not supposed to shuffle it or that they could mulligan a deck, a hand that only had one land in it. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to help you out. And we're, you know, I, I tried to help them as much as I could, 
but I was just swinging with two random, you know, dorks and I'm doing poison damage, poison damage, poison damage. I had a double striker and a, a single one. And he had a, the O2 uh, ornithopter that has toxic. And so he's blocking uh, my one, one, but not my double striker. I'm like, why are you doing that? You're taking two poison every time. I don't understand. Uh, I was, and I got him to six poison and, or no, I got him to, yeah, I got him to six poison and I attack again. And this time he blocks my double striker. And I was like, huh, what happened? He takes a one and goes to seven. He's like, aha, I made it. And I'm like, you made it, you made it. And he starts tapping his lands and out of nowhere slams down. He did two poisonous right. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And he's like, target player with seven poison counters loses the game targeting me and I was like, <laughs> oh my god this is it moral victory everybody at the table like the the seats around us we all cheered it was amazing it was like just like holy crap you you found a quest you went for it and you solved it and you we i mean how do you fault that that was so cool it was so cool uh, that is a card i saw pulled off only a few times on the weekend but someone targeting themselves with it is, is a highlight for sure it's like look oh, i'm yeah, to go out like, i'm going out on my own terms you know and it's very hit it too good it's very coming up. <laughs> can we talk a little bit about like yeah because it's funny larry was telling me he's like yeah i saw a bunch of people outstanding the printer stickering cards and i'm like you don't even do that anymore he's like no we have a program that just prints out playtest cards so like even wizards employees were like Wow, stickers. That's that's old school. Yeah, I mean, the, um, the, the truth the truth of the matter is our printers were having trouble the week I wanted to print these, so we just did it old school style, uh, which required a lot more work, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's very novel. Way cooler. Way cooler. Um, so can we talk about some of the individual cards? Yeah, absolutely. So there was one of the cards that I saw that caused the most heartache slash heartburn at the game was uh for rec uh platinum persecutor yes oh poor <laughs> platinum persecutor you know this is this is i'll mean, read off what it does in a second but this is one to me where it's like this is the kind of thing that was fun <laughs> to put in exactly this event because you have a very stupid <laughs> game against it one time you're like that is memorable i will tell the story forever and i hope that never happens again right so now you can go ahead and tell people about it yeah the, that's exactly it so platinum persecutor is a five five Artifact creature, angel demon for five colorless uh, or five generic mana, whatever. And it says flying. Players can't lose the game or win the game. At the beginning of your upkeep, if each player has an empty library, sacrifice Platinum per Persecutor and you win the game. This is so annoying, Gavin. Right. So the idea is you play it. Nobody can win or lose. And then if you deck both players out, you win the game. Oh, can uh, I tell you how my last game ended? Because it did yeah. this card. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so. So I'm sitting there against my opponent. I haven't drawn a land for a million years. I don't know what happened. My deck is just jank. I'm finally getting some speed up. He slams down Platinum Persecutor. And we're just swinging at each other. I'm like, I'm at negative five. He's at like six. Next turn, I was planning on Alpha Striking and then, you know, disenchanting that thing somehow and killing it. And he's like, aha, you're at negative five. Okay, well, I cast Black Sun Zenith on my Persecutor. You die. And I'm like, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> the, 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 uh, what can I say? <laughs> that reminds me. So, I mean, the card is based on Platinum Angel and Abyssal Persecutor, right? That's the reference. And yeah. So, it reminds me a lot of those Abyssal Persecutor plays. You've got your own Abyssal Persecutor. They're like, how can I How can I pull this off? And uh, you got rid of it just in time, it sounds like. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, the one that got me was this card, Echoing Echo. How do you keep your... <laughs> it's so weird target creature and all creatures that share a name with that creature gain echo three until your end of your next turn which basically means that you have to pay three mana to keep them alive or to sacrifice them which is great against like token swarms or whatever this is a really neat card when i was thinking about it i'm like this would be an amazing commander wrath it's so weird what happened here what like how did you get to this well so um okay, so the way i designed most of these cards or i designed like at least three quarters of them this way is I looked through the, all the old Mirrodin sets we've ever done, and I just flagged things or pieces of cycles or individual cards I thought would be funny to do like a riff on. And so in Dark Steel, there was a cycle of echoing cards. You might like echoing truth, echoing courage, echoing ruin, and they do something to target creature and each creature that shares the same name with them. So I was like, okay, that's kind of funny. Let's right. do a new echoing card. And what better to echo than the echo mechanic? So I was like, let's let's just combine these two goofy <laughs> things, make an echoing echo, and it just it all came together, right? <laughs> Uh, and give them all echo theory. It's, it's a funny card. You can echo all their that's, mites or something, you know? 
That's so funny. Yeah, that's exactly what I was planning on using it for. But it also just seems like a lot of these just feel like things that tickle you. Like, yeah. th- these are cool jokes. Like, a uh, Phyrexian Aesthetician, which is like a 4-3 with haste, perfectly fine creature to play by itself, and it's got oil scavenge. And I was like, I love the idea of my things are dead, so now I'm tapping them to get oil out of them. Um, or like Phyrexian Brute Star, affinity for Phyrexians. <laughs> Because it's a brood star, you yeah. know. I was like, "Well, first of all, brood star affinity for artifacts. What a Phyrexian brood star do? Affinity for Phyrexians." And I Let's named, as, as you're probably noticing, I named a lot of them exactly like how we would name our playtest cards. I mean, there's not a lot of rigor put into these or anything. It was like, <laughs> no. I want to make it a very authentic experience. So, what would we call a Phyrexian as brood star? Phyrexian brood star, right? It's <laughs> not not like the most original thing in the world, but that's how we play test magic. So, like like this dude, Phyrexian chimney, imp. Phyrexian chimney, imp, yeah. <laughs> Why? Why did you make a chimney? Imp? Like I said, I looked through all the old cards and I was like, chimney imp is hilarious because it's so bad. Everyone makes fun of chimney imp. What if the Phyrexians got their hand on a chimney imp? And then I made that card. <laughs> so you made 60 of these? There's Yes, yeah, so there's 60 cards that were given out to players and there's two additional cards that were prize cards. So at the end of each day, this, this was kind of a cool twist we can talk about. Yeah, you see yes. them right there. Uh, there's I'll Phila and Delphia, if you, you know, some people out there will get Yeah, get the like joke. the first day I got Phila, and I was like, that's a cool name. I'm ah, referring to this. The second, uh, it's okay. I'll make EK find these later. Uh, and the other one was called Delphia, and I was like, I see what you did there, Gavin. <laughs> so there, so at the end of the event, after you finish your three rounds, you got prize tickets for each round you won. And then at the end, you also got handed one of these like, special promo cards. And the, the deal is they each have an effect that changes depending on who won the event that day, which team won the event. So Phila had two abilities, and it turns out that the Mirans won the first day. So now forever, for the rest of time, it has the Mirren ability. And on the second day, the Phyrexians won, and so now that permanently has the Phyrexian ability. Now, of course, these cards aren't legal anyway, per se, but in Commander with Rule Zero, I thought some people would go and build fun Commander decks around these. And oh, I hope I'm going to be a partner do. deck. It's going to happen. Cool. <laughs> cool. That, I mean, I think that I think that um, the Delphia deck is going to be really fun. So Delphia says, it's like, if Mirren's won, all the cards from Mirrodin, um, uh, the original Mirrodin block, and Mirrodin, and Mirrodin Besieged, I think, cost three less. And if the Phyrexians won, all the stuff from New Phyrexia, um, all will be one. Mar- March the Machines cost less, including the Commander decks. And yeah, so um, let me let I me let me read cool. the card. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so Delphia undecided. It costs Wooberg to cast. I love that I just said Wooberg, and it's a six six legendary elephant. Why is it an elephant? Um, why not? Works for me. Uh, I, I, was, I, was, I was like, I was like, I don't know. I was just like, let's make a Loxodon. I don't know. Sounds cool. Sure, why not? Um, and then spells you cast cost three less to cast if they were originally printed in the following expansion to commander or associated commander decks, depending on who won the unknown event. Mirren victory, mirrored in dark shield, fifth down of scars, Phyrexian vi- victory, mirrored in besieged, new Phyrexia, all will be won in March of the Machine. So since the Phyrexians won, it's going to be a Wooberg deck that discounts cards from besieged Phyrexia one and March of the Machines. And their associated and commander decks other- give you a lot of tools. Yeah, there's a lot of them. And then the does that also count reprints that were in those decks? I think it says originally printed, right? Uh, originally printed. You're right. Good call. Yeah. And then Philia Unsealed is a colorless artifact golem. So four mana for a four, four. If the Mirrens won the event, Philia is also a rebel and you can't get poison counters and Wooberg exile target artifact. If the Phyrexians won, Philia is also a Phyrexian and other Phyrexians you control gain plus one, plus one to toxic. So basically what this is, it's a Wooberg colorless commander that uh, says you can't get poison counters and you can exile things. And the other one makes things cheaper. That's actually it's a really cool pair. I like that a lot. That seems really fun. I think I think um, Delphia. Now that you asked, it was an elephant because it never forgets. Ah, the, 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 I remember why <laughs> that, that stupid joke. There's a lot of there's a lot of like very dumb little things I just typed in there because I was like I, I was like sometimes when you're designing a card like this, you got to make a decision, and usually it's like let's make the thing that's as funniest with whatever's in my head right now, and maybe someone else will find it funny too. So it's a it's a you know right. It, it remembers who won the war, so it never forgets. Oh. So one of the things that made me laugh, I got this card called Rosewater's Nemesis. You know, three white, white for a four, six monkey cleric. I love that. Uh, Vigilance protection from Phyrexians, poison tolerance three, which is it takes three additional poison counters to kill you, which I love the poison tolerance mechanic, by the way. I thought it was awesome. But I love that this is like anti-Rosewater. So I got you, Forsyth, and Rosewater to sign it because I'm like, look, it is two Nemesi and the man himself. Like, you you, I'm, you I'm now have all the infinity cool. gems. You can you have so much power with that card. Jim, that that is, I mean, that's what so the frame and put on the wall. That's like a very special piece. Yeah, there was also it was it was funny. One of the ones that had like poison tolerance, 
it said like the cards had poison tolerance too, but the flavor text had only one on it. And I had to call a judge and be like, judge, does this work the way I think it does? And it was funny because we were like, um, yes, it should give you two poison. Tolerance, yeah, the, 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 uh, I thought I caught all the typos, but that was one. So, But I think that that's actually more fun and adds more fun character to the thing right, right. Like, very, very, very much is like look we really are play testing here sometimes you play test yeah. and the reminder text on a thing you go it all the time literally all the time in game <laughs> design I, I will change something and then forget to change the reminder text that just happens constantly so you really got the full cabin play <laughs> test experience i loved it and it was so cool like the event especially had this really neat thing where you were like we don't want to wait for rounds so you play your game you go up with your partner you record your score see who won for x or Mir- mirrodin and then you just got in a line and you would just get paired with whoever else was there next that was on the other faction and we just chained through games so quickly it was so well constructed eventually once we all kind of got the kinks out because it was such a weird event it just was hilarious and you play with anybody and you have a blast and it was so funny one of the dudes i was playing against by the way was like who is Gavin and why are you calling for him to come and look at these cards? And I'm like, do you know what this event's called? And he's like, uh, it's the unknown event. I'm like, it's Gavin's unknown event. He made all the cards. He's like, Oh wait, that's Gavin. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. The, I, I gotta so say good. one of the big trends for me in this event, obviously the play test cards were a blast. So, you know, th- thumbs up on that. But I think one of the biggest triumphs and lessons from you for this event is, that pairing system you were talking about, right? Normally you go to one of one of these tournaments, you sit down, you play your match. You're like, well, I finished my match. I got 25 minutes till my next round is going to start and probably longer because it's yeah. going to go to time or something, right? And you just have to like go stumble around the hall for 25 minutes, which is fine. You see your friends, you watch one of their games or whatever. But being able to finish and just go play in a game right away felt so good. And it almost made me wonder oh, yeah. if we want to do more events in this vein. Now there's some issues, of course, like you got to make sure that, you know, you can somehow keep tournament fidelity and, you know, there aren't, you aren't gaming the system, but man, it felt so good to be able to do that. I wonder if we want to do that more times. I mean, there was it definitely felt, yeah, go ahead. And, and even though there was like a bit of a line at some points, I think there's going to take some kinks to get the line part out of the way. I, I talked to some people, they're like, yeah, there was a line. It took some time. It was still faster than waiting 25 minutes for my next round, though, you know? Right? So Yeah, like the line was like at best five minutes of waiting, not like an hour of waiting. Right. And this way, it meant that, for instance, somebody like Voxy could get into an Abyssal Persecutor match and like get sat there for like two hours against this while the rest of us can kind of churn through and she can just wait. And if there's another person, they can play. It was amazing. Um, and I think overall, everybody just seemed to have a blast. Everybody was having such a good time. And like, we all had like sheets of paper with the swords on them or like a decent, you would pass dice around to roll to see what Praetor you got or whatever. Um, it was, it was just completely like everybody was having a good time. It felt like the best kind of pre-release is what it felt like. Right. It, it felt, felt like, like, it felt like a once in a lifetime pre-release, like a wacky pre-release, you know? Yeah. That's exactly what it felt like. Um, and I know you were just running around and bouncing around and answering questions. So, what did it feel like to see like 250 people or whatever playing your game and enjoying themselves like this? It was awesome. I mean, you know, I truly had no idea what to expect, right? Because it's not like that we did a lot of market research on this or whatever, right? It was just like, I think that this will be cool. <laughs> How do you even do and, that? And, it, and it's very possible that I, I could have run the same event. People would have been like, that was not cool, right? Or I didn't enjoy that or the cards weren't fun to play with or whatever. But I think, you know, I used to do improv. Mm. And it felt a lot to me, it reminded me of doing improv, because everyone, when you're doing improv, everyone is in on it, right? Everyone wants it to work, everyone is laughing, and there's a big difference between improv and and stand-up comedy, right? When you go watch a stand-up comedian, you sit back and you're like, well, look, you have had your entire life to rehearse this set, Uh, it better be darn good, and I'm going to like only laugh if it's really, really, really funny, right? Yeah. And so you have to get in this kind of mindset with improv comedy. Everyone's like, well, look, they don't really know what they're doing. They're just trying their best and making it up in the moment and whatever. Yeah. And this felt a lot like, like the same kind of energy I'd get from an improv show where um, everyone's like, yeah, well, it's kind of weird and wacky. And we're all just kind of in this together. We're all going to laugh and have a good time. And, you know, when weird things happen during a game or the rules don't quite work or, or, you know, there's a small, yeah, quirk, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's just a goofy experience. Right. And I think that kind of like jovial, fun nature really helps bring it all together and i I, that was great yeah and so many people were like what the hell is an ebon prater (laughs) yeah people Um, being people rolling the d6 be like ebon prater and then like looking it up was a delight and it turns out by the way that uh original skull clamp which was plus one plus one and then it dies and gives you two cards that is still broken 
that yeah, card is out, still right. busted. <laughs> Original yeah. Skull Clamp was still very strong. It wasn't quite the combo engine that the final one was, but it's still extremely, certainly silly card. Like that, I would still run that card. That card is nutty. Um, the weirdest one was Mind Slaver Toolkit. <laughs> what the hell were you doing with this card? It is so like I I read it and I was like I don't understand what this is even asking me to do. Uh, it's a z- zero casting cost artifact. It says target opponent tap target opponent gains control of mind, mind slaver toolkit X and tap choose any number. You lose X life. You discard X cards. You sacrifice X permanent. What? What? <laughs> okay, so. I personally always find it charming if in these kind of things, there's one card that is just really bad um, <laughs> because it gets people talking, right? It's like, they're like, let's well, make any sense. They ask their friend, they're like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me either, right? And then you have this fun little discussion. And then when you finally all realize collectively, no, this just sucks. It's like this really, really <laughs> funny moment, right? I, I think anyway. Um, yeah, you were busy just trolling us collectively. <laughs> Um, now, you know, this is this is a card I went back and forth the most on in the set, probably, because it is a once in a lifetime experience. So you feel like a little maybe some people feel a little trolled if like this is one of their 10 cards. Um, but also it did inspire a lot of discussions there. A lot of people would be like, how do I use this? The joke, of course, is if you have Mind Slaver and you, give, you can give this to your opponent, combo with Mind Slaver, and they have to sacrifice all their stuff, right? It probably mm. would have been more appropriate if Mind Slaver was actually in the set somewhere, which it is not. Um but, uh, you know, I, I will say I made a video, you can find it on my YouTube channel, Good Morning Magic, that has all of the all the cards. And I yeah. asked people, hey, this is, I went for a long time back and forth on this one, what do you think, should I have done it? And in the comments, some people are like, I'm so glad you did this, I love reading this, right? So I think it's, um, I think it's delightful. It's a, like, I got it in my pack and I looked at that, I'm like, this gotta be a troll, this is so <laughs> weird. But it was so, like, it was so, it, it felt the good kind of trolling. The kind of trolling where you're like, ah, this is funny. It's like, you know, like I didn't feel cheated or anything. I was just like, of course the playtest cards are going to have like some weirdo Johnny rare that means nothing. You're like, what is going on? Right. And um, it's, and you, know, and you know, it's one of 10 cards, right? So yes, you're not gonna play yeah. this one, but the the collating we did for the packs was, and we collated them all by hand, right? So we made all whatever, 650 of these booster packs by hand. It was a total, I've got some fun behind the scenes. Hey, that's pictures. what I was going to ask you. It, I was like, was, how did you collate? These? It was a total, total nightmare. And ultimately what we decided to do, because it was, we were on, only mere mortals is the only rule we would adhere to is we would not put two of the same play test card in a pack, right? We wouldn't care about color I'm balance cool. or anything. We would just not double up. And so that way, no one had to get two Mind Slaver toolkits, which would have been a very sad uh, situation. Yeah, it really would have sucked to have gotten two Mind Slaver toolkits. I cannot imagine trying to deal with, like, I mean, that would have been, it wouldn't have been sad. It would have just been a little disappointing, you know? But I think that the way you guys did it was so cool that there was really not a lot of, like, like everybody was just happy to be able to just use these weirdo cards in the first place. My one sadness is that on Saturday, there were a bunch of people who were waiting in line who had signed up and were excited because they'd heard about it. And they were like, what's going on? And I was like telling them in cagey terms. I was trying to be very spoiler friendly. And then some people were just like straight up out and out tell you what's going on. I'm like, guys, I'm trying not to spoil this for them. I want them to have the fun experience of sitting down and being like, what the hell's going on? Uh, but you can't, you can't do that forever. And still the joy of opening these cards and seeing like, it's weird. one thing to have somebody tell you, you get weirdo cards and another thing to open up, like naturalize a phyresis and be like, wait, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Or I mean, like, it's, it, it was it's interesting. I, I thought about this a bunch, both before and afterwards. Is it better to have one event or two events? Cause with one event, it's, it's the first surprise for everybody, right? They see it all for the first time. There's no chance of spoilers of like finding out what happened the day before. But on the second hand, I think for this one, I needed the first event to get people excited for the second event, right? It's like the word of mouth is like, hey, you got to go check this thing out. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you really got to go see it. You see like maybe a Reddit post with a playtest card. You're like, What the heck is that? I got to go see this. So at least for the yeah. first, I felt like I needed to. Um, many I think events, we'll see if there's one or two of them. But I think I think two is the right number, not just because it's the surprise effect or whatever, but it's also once you hear about it, knowing that you can't go do it feels really bad. And so being able to sign up for it and being able to do it, even if you have the surprise spoiled, being able to play in a once in a lifetime thing is totally worth it. And I think it's in the best interest of everybody to maximize the amount of people who get the chance to like, this is such a cool experience and I want everybody who gets the chance to try to do it. Yeah, it, it was. Be, it would be sad not to. It was magical, and I like I said, I can't wait to see what Minneapolis has in store. I truly myself don't even know yet. So I'll yeah, like you're gonna have to sit soon. there and go like, how do I top this? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few ideas, but uh, yeah, 
you know, come ask me in a few months and I'll have a better idea. <laughs> but so, there, you're, not, you're still not going to know what it is. What it is. You're going to sign up. You're going to, you know, enter. And at that moment, I will announce what's going on. It should be a blast. Yeah. So let's uh, kind of bring this to a little bit of a, a close here and talk about the event in general. What do you think? How do you think Philly went? Really well. I mean, I thought it was a really good event. I had a blast. You know, a lot of the major concerns from Vegas were addressed. There was play space for everybody. You know, like oh, that yeah. was awesome. I think there's still some, some stuff we need to work on. Um, I sent over an email even actually this morning to um, to our higher ups. Like, hey, there's some stuff I think we need to need to figure out, and just some things that are like, you know, might have made sense previously, but I don't know if they make sense anymore. Um, and yeah. so there's some things to work on, but I mean, on the whole, I was, I was really happy with the event and I had, I had a fantastic time and there's a lot of learnings to take from all the things we did to improve for going forward. Like one of the things in my email that I sent was, you know, this unknown event matching went really well. I people just finish their match and play again was awesome. Is there, are there more events we could do that for? You know, there's just a lot of yeah. cool, cool stuff like that. Like you so. can't do that for like a, a draft or whatever, but I'm sure there's more cool casual event. Like if for some reason someone was to run like, I don't know, conspiracy or like some plane chase or something like that, it would be cool to just have like quick matching like that. It felt like, you know what it felt like the first time Midgo did leagues for draft and you sign up and you just jump in and then you're like, instead of watching like streamers double queuing while they're waiting for the next one, it's just like, all right, we're just jumping into the next draft. Let's go. Right. People um, don't like wait times, right? The, 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 it's just way more fun to go out. play Magic right away, right? Yeah, we're not here to watch you not play Magic. We're here to play Magic. Um, also, it was really interesting to me that of all the games I played in Philadelphia, all, every one of them but two Commander games involved you. Six of them were your unknown event, and then there was the Chaos Draft that we ran, and then there was the Cube we did on Thursday. <laughs> That's so true. literally That's everything true. except for the two commander games I played were Gavin Day. So it was I um I personally do not get to play. You know, everyone always asks me like all weekend long. They're like, "Oh man, you must be played so much Magic at these things." <laughs> and I'm like, "Absolutely not. I do not have the, like I am too busy running everything and trying to do a bunch of stuff to actually play a bunch of Magic at them." But I'm so grateful that I got to play a little bit of Magic and I got to yeah play with you a tiny bit and then also help run my event, which felt like I was playing Magic through the lens of other people, you know, in a lot of ways. And it is funny if you've never played against Gavin in a game of Magic. It's funny as heck because he is a lovable, kind guy. One of my dearest friends. I love to talk to him all the time. We're smiling. We're laughing. He sits down to Magic. It's his murder face. And it's just like, you're going to die. This is going to be cutthroat. There's no quarter given. Well, you know, especially when you play one on one, like in Commander, it's like, you know, I'll be jovial whatever but people always say and oh, yeah. I, I can't even control it it's like werewolf gavin mode or something it's like when i sit oh, yeah. down play a one-on-one game like i'm having fun i'll chat with you i'll see where you're from or whatever and then like we're one turn in and it's like my eyes change and i'm like oh yeah to, to destroy you and i just go <laughs> back into uh my competitive days because you know a lot of people oh, don't know this but i used to play on the on the pro tour back in the day right it was yeah it was a very different world from what i do now so no, it's funny because suddenly the way you hold your car cards changes, the way you play your cards suddenly becomes a pro tour snap and suddenly you get your eyes get hooded and you're like, yeah, man, sucks to be you. You should attack, huh? <laughs> Too bad I lightning bolt it. Guess that sucks for you. And I'm like, oh, damn, Gavin's going to kill me. And of course you did. You slaughtered me twice with the stupid control magic you splashed. Anyways, that being notwithstanding, it was an absolutely delightful weekend. I had the best time. This is one of the coolest events I've ever been to. And um, your your event was a big part of why that was. But you're right, though, man. Like, I realized this time around that folks who get to a certain echelon of popularity, you we don't get to experience the con the way normal people do. Like, we can't just, like, back in the day, I would have sat down and played, like, 30 Commander games and met people and hung out with my friends. Whatever. This time around, every four steps, someone would be like, hey, Shiva, it's great to see you. Hey, can you sign this, take a picture, whatever? And I'm like, that's awesome. Like, even during our game, even during our own draft that we were playing, someone came up to me and asked me to draw them a soldier token. And I was like, of course, I happily, you know, it's like, I'm here because the fans let me do this. But that also means that folks like you and me don't get to play games with people because we can't. I, it, it's disrespectful for me to sit down to these three other people that we're playing commander with what if there's just going to be a constant stream of people coming to ask for our signatures or time or conversation or photos and i was like you know what i would rather just talk to people and you know, shake hands sign play mats whatever you want to do and leave everybody feeling good about it rather than having you sit down with me and then just feel bad that i had to keep directing my focus elsewhere yeah, for me, I always feel like I'm there to help enhance the show, right? And whatever I'm going to yeah. do that is going to make the show the best it could possibly be, I want to help out. So for a lot of people, it's just, you know, talking and walking the floor and signing cards. And I mean, I love playing Magic. And if I wanted to do, I could probably squirrel away for some of that. But 
talking to people is how my timing is the best spent of these things. So I want to talk to as many, as many people as possible. And by sitting down yeah. and playing a game of Commander, I'm not going to learn as much about what's happening in the show or, or what people feel about Magic as I am by like going and just talking with a bunch of players during that time. So I exactly. really value that time I get to I get to have when I'm not you know running around from place to place trying to do one thing or another. Yeah, like there's a real benefit. I mean, we're never going to get the chance to actually sit down with people and talk to them and really hear what their problems are the way we can in person. And it's really great, especially if like, you know, like me, I'm helping run Commander. I want to know, what do you think of the format? Whatever. You obviously you probably heard about every kind of magic format there is this weekend from people who are like, hey, man, my popper deck sucks. How are you going to fix it? Or, hey, how come you didn't ban that popper deck yet? You know, like. Yeah, did you get a lot of popper this weekend? Or at least I had a lot of notes on popper. People are really, uh, they're really appreciative of the communication we've done on the format. You know, on my YouTube channel, Good Morning Magic, I've done some pretty in-depth reviews of where the format's at right now. And I've really enjoyed just um, talking it through with people. And people, people have been like, hey, I, I super appreciate that. I love hearing how in-depth you've been about the format. And, and it's really cool to hear that response in person from folks. Plus yeah. a lot of the popper panel folks were there. Like Alex Ullman was exactly. there, Paige Smith was there, Emma Partlow was there. So we all got, all got the chance to talk with many of uh, these players. I was just about to ask that exact thing. You were very good at segues, man. Like I was just about to ask, like, did you get a chance to meet them? Cause I was crashing with Alex and I ran into Emma and I saw Paige and I was like, Oh look, it's just the, the popper cag is right here. You guys are here. You can talk about this. Um, did you get any chance to have any face to face time talking about how you're going to ban affinity next? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not really. We, um, I talked with Alex a bit. I saw Paige briefly, then Emma. I never even saw, which was super sad. I've never met her in person. I've always wanted to, but it's just you know, there's a, so many people at this event. There's a I'm million around, people there, and uh, there were people there I didn't even know were there who I didn't realize until later on. They saw they posted pictures, and I'm like. Where the hell were you? <laughs> My best shot is running into you in the hall, right? I'm just I'm just running around all because I have a lot of obligations. It's like I have to be at this place at a time, this place at a time. Usually I've got like a half hour of walking between them, and I just hope I kind of run into people during that time. They were so. so the halls were way too big. <laughs> I but you're right though, because I ran into Emma. The only way I ran into her was literally I was leaving to go get breakfast and she was coming in from breakfast and we ran into each other in the doorway. And I was like, <laughs> Look, we got to see each other at least. You exist, I exist, great. The, 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 the whole – when these conventions to me always feel like the equivalent of uh, – let's make plans sometime, right? You know, like when you're walking into the grocery store and you see your old buddy or whatever. It's like, oh, so good to see you. Yeah. Look, I got to go get more bananas, but like we'll catch up sometime, right? And it's like you both know it's probably not going to happen, but you just like enjoy the like <laughs> two minutes you have with each other of saying hi. Uh, that's what it is, you know? Because um, there's just there's so that many is... great people at these events. And I encourage you, to, if you're listening, come on out to Minneapolis. It's going to be a great time. You're going to see a lot of cool people. You'll get the chance to catch us running around in the hallways or you know ask a few questions and get that little experience. And it means a lot to me to get to meet all of you and, and chat with all y'all. Yeah, or go to Barcelona or tell Pastimes to put these things into other countries so that other people can get the experience too. But you know what, Gavin? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really, I had such a blast hanging out with you this weekend. We actually ended up hanging out quite a bit randomly just in the course of the weekend. And it was very, very cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, I, I had such a good time and I'm glad we were able to sit and actually be able to, pl I'm glad I could experience this. It was so cool. It was uh, yeah. so cool. I'm so glad, you know, you took the leap and gave it a try. Because trying out an unknown thing for the first time is like, I don't know, what's it going to be? Um, but I appreciate you taking taking the dive Look, in man. and- with Minneapolis, hopefully you'll be there because who knows what's in store. I agree. And I'll be honest, there's a few people in Magic who have earned enough uh, goodwill from me that I will sight unseen and try whatever you do. And you're one of those people. <laughs> well, and so, uh, <laughs> so this was a blast. But if people wanted to find you or see that cool video you did about all of the individual cards in this, where could they go? Yeah, I mean, you can always find me on Twitter, of course, at Gavin Verhey or Instagram or any other social media platform. But the big one is, of course, my YouTube channel, Good Morning Magic. And I'm sure Stephen will link my video maybe in the show notes or something like that to um, yeah. go check out. With It shows off all 62 of the playtest cards, tells you all the references on them, and um, talks a bit about the event too. So go give that a go give that a look. It just occurred to me, I'm like, man, there's no way to get like an uncut sheet of these playtest cards. Because I would literally be get an uncut sheet of Magic cards and then just paste over them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I have a couple uncut sheets of, of the printouts. You know, I guess I could hang those on my wall or Ooh. something. Ooh, that would be really neat. Hmm. I okay, can also, anyways, like, with five clicks, print out another one of them because it's exactly what Wizards and Printers uses. So that is fair. <laughs> not that I'm going to. That's, I would not do that. But. Yeah, I know. But that's also, I'm like, oh, yeah, you could literally just print, print right. more. But. <laughs> Anyways, my friends, uh, as always, you can find me at Gear Reporting Gears. You can find this podcast anywhere podcasts are sold or at Cool Stuff Inc. on Tuesdays. And now simultaneously on Tuesdays, 
YouTube. Me and EK have started with the past handful of episodes trying to do a day and date release with the YouTube video and the MP3 podcast. Please let me know what you think. I'm really eager to see if this enhances your experience with the show or if you guys prefer it to be staggered, whatever. I would love to know. Um, and as always, my friends, it is not magic without the gathering, and we will see you next time. Bye.